there was all these all this tectonic activity that was creating all these volcanoes and causing them to erupt and then this continuous volcanic activity just built up this huge plateau that then filled in everything Alrighty, guys so here we are the chasm this is a cool place man you see my wells gray stuff very similar to wells gray guys but look the chasm real nice guys so this is a perfect viewpoint to kind of get what i was saying so you see those mountains there and you see how this has been kind of cut out this is all glacial activity guys that do this it's amazing what running water will do so this is all lava guys and it formed in layers and you can see there's distinct colors there's red yellow blue orange like ready orange kind of color and they're classified into different groups like the cash creek group the kamloops group the dead man formation and they all just different types of rock right different types of lava rock just kept erupting and it filled in like 3300 cubic kilometers of lava this is like a little tiny subsection of it like closer to the mountain so you see that mountain there and then you see the lava flows here so these lava flows would have just kept it, there would have been volcanoes out in the interior there that would have just kept erupting and erupting and the lava it was it was very fluid and it would just go out a really long way and so it just kept flowing out and then another eruption would happen and it would flow out again and flow it again and flow it again and then it just built up this huge plateau guys this massive plateau and covered mountains so like entire valleys were buried so like there's whole mountains underneath here that just like don't exist anymore and are just gone it's not a thing anymore they're just valleys buried water just eroded this right carved all of this out form this big chasm and then you can see the different lava flows so talk a little bit about the uh, geology groupings here we got four primary geological groups which are the cash creek group then there's Kamloops formation. There's the Dead Man formation, which is a yellow, and then the Chilcotin. And you can kind of see like they're they're multicolored pieces. They stack on different layers, and they would have happened at different times. But the Chilcotin basalts, guys, that's what it's called. This is the train track for the Pacific Great Eastern Railway, which then became BC Rail, which is now owned by CN, and but BC Rail uses it. And it goes up to Prince George. You can actually see the layers, like there's definitive like lines, cold joints, where you can actually see where one started, one stopped, and one started, and one stopped. This and this was all by a river, guys. That is now now gone. But it carved all of this out, made this huge chasm. But such a distinct formation guys the lava layers you can literally see the lines right the plates in the ocean are moving towards north america and they're subducting under and you know burning off creating mountains and volcanic eruptions but at the same time we'll see this when we go to marble canyon things are also the stuff that's on the surface is crashing in to north america and butting up like butting up against north america so like vancouver island was out in the ocean hawaii for example is going to become you know a part of north america at some point but basically like what was happening was there was all these all this tectonic activity that was creating all these volcanoes and causing them to erupt and then this continuous volcanic activity just built up this huge plateau that then filled in everything right and one really cool thing to note that i've always kind of thought of too is there is some exploratory mining going on in this region where they're drilling into the rock like because it goes down for like several hundred meters in areas guys like it was thick this is a few hundred feet it can go down several hundred meters thick full of lava different types of lava to, corresponding to different groups depending on what time about 10 million years ago up until just very recently under a million it was erupting and filling up and then gradually over time landscapes like this got crafted they're drilling for gold and minerals around here and the core drilling right down through because 
some people believe, myself included, that like Mount Begbie, which is a little bit up further, that was a much bigger mountain. But then it was filled in by lava, which now is kind of like a mini mountain. That got me thinking with the amount of lava, right? Like 3,300 cubic kilometers of lava, 50,000 square feet. That's a substantial amount of lava. And so there could have been entire valleys, valleys in between mountains that, you know, maybe there's some rivers that had placer gold or who knows, right? No, we don't know because it was a long, long time before we existed. But like there could have been these ancient valleys, these paleo valleys, they call them, that were full of gold and iron and copper and silver. But then all these volcanoes erupted, filling in. And so there's efforts to actively like mine that and figure out how much is there? Where is it? What is it? Really cool though. Reminds me of Wells Gray. But this is the chasm, guys. And when they were on the route to the Caribou Gold Fields back in the day, they came across this and they were all shocked that this existed. And nobody at the time understood the process for how it came to be. So this is the marble guys, Marble Canyon. So guys, you see these benches here going up and that's how they access the cuts. Like they chisel, you know, a bench out of the side of the mountain that gives them an access road and then you just weave up, right? But it's like I was saying before with the new Afton mine and go to Kamloops there. If your hole gets too big and you get too many of those, then you're not productive because your trucks take too long to go get a load and then they take too long to dump the load and then you're only getting like a load or two a day and then you know project manager steps in and says all right we're not doing that we're not producing enough right so but it's just a really good example right and this is just a marble quarry are just about to come into Lillooet Fraser here you can see stabilizing the slopes but this is the Fraser River guys Fraser Canyon Fraser River so rugged man imagine walking through here on foot see the sagebrush guys the grasses and the sagebrush you can see look at the highway look how they're building the highway guys really really rugged they've got soil anchors up top stabilizing the slope right they want to keep the slope stable and then look how they got to build the road 
We're about to enter a section of the Fraser that's really, really bad, guys. It's really, it's really, really narrow. The water moves really fast. And there's just so many hazards. Like, look at it. Imagine trying to maneuver a stern wheeler or a big boat through here. Not gonna happen, guys. So, it basically, you, know, you just, you gotta go around, right? So there's portage routes and you would not wanna run this. And if you fall in, especially in the spring, or in the like, you know, late spring, kind of towards summer, could be really problematic. Access to the Bridge River country, guys. So if you take this road, we did this when we went to Braylorn. If you take this road on the other side of the canyon, you cross that bridge, that bridge takes you to Bridge River country, and then that's the Highway 40, guys. So you follow that for two and a half hours, you'll end up in Braylorn, Gold Bridge, La Joie Dam, Terzaghi Dam, we did the bridge river but it's just cool like obviously i talked about it gold on the fraser and stuff because people wanted to branch out and find more gold but you can see the road just like just a cool vantage point of it and so if you do want to go to the bridge river country this would be how you did it you can go uh seaton portage shalith uh darcy anderson lake uh seaton lake or you can go like braylorn gold bridge pioneer mine that kind of a thing very rugged road guys be prepared when you're on that road take gas with you you know take your time nice and easy but cool vantage point I, I i forgot that you could see it from here so dead straight ahead of us guys is the bridge river valley make sure you check that video out bridge river gold Braylorn. uh make sure you check the power videos out as well that's all about bridge river country guys and we'll be doing more i'll be coming back into the bridge river i got more stuff to cover this like i said very very historic area guys but anyways guys, make sure you like and subscribe to the video, leave a comment, and Sasquatch Prospector out.